You guys are lying. <laughs> Feel free to chat though. Do you want to give me a cue to start this one, or do you, is it obvious? Uh, he meant. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Smart ass. Hallelujah. Lord our God, 
In your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred day, night, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and, quen and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ah, you have moved God of everlasting mercy, 
who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and their possessions and divide them among all according to each one's needs. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. more precious than gold, 
that it is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You rejoice with an indesirable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. I'll, I'll repeat that one more time. Mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Now, when we look at Jesus Christ, you know, we're, we are celebrating Easter. right? So this is his resurrection that we celebrate. And what led up to this moment? What led up to his resurrection? Well, everything that we celebrate, celebrated last week, where our Lord entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, only to be betrayed by one of his apostles, and then betrayed by his other ones who abandoned him in his time of need as he was taken away and imprisoned. And while in prison and being uh, held in court, he faced uh, people who spit on him, ridiculed him, lied in his face, and then suffered and died for us by being nailed on his cross. You would think that after suffering through all of these things, that if it was either myself or you, you'd probably look on those people who you called friends and you may want, you, you'd probably be angry with them, right? And you might want to even punish them. It's like, at this moment in my life, you abandoned me. You who followed me for three years abandoned me in my time of need. And so it would, have been, it would have been right and just for our Lord to say, and now, because you abandoned me, in my anger towards you, I'm going to punish you or just dismiss you altogether. He, had, he has every right to do that. But yet, he doesn't. He doesn't. We see that after he's resurrected, he's come back from the dead. When he appears to the apostles and disciples, rather than look, point the finger at them and say, shame on you for abandoning me, he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And we heard in the gospel time and time again, that's what he says to them when he enters into the room. And especially to Thomas, the doubt, doubting Thomas, right? The one who said, I will not believe that our Lord has risen unless I'm able to stick my own hands and fingers into his wounds and into his side. And again, when our Lord appears to him, he says, peace be with you to Thomas. And then instead of shaming him and pointing the finger at him, he says, touch my hands, touch my wounds. Put your hand in my side. See that I am real. What our Lord is showing to them and showing to us through them is His great compassion, His great mercy on us. It's a beautiful thing, my brothers and sisters, because He has ever again, ever, uh, again, He has every right to be angry with us, with them, for abandoning Him, for allowing those people, those Jews, to crucify Him. And yet He comes back to us and says, Peace. And for us, that's a great witness of how we, in turn, need to live our life. This is the reason why this Sunday has been given to us as the Sunday of Divine Mercy, God's Mercy. Because as we were called to imitate Him in carrying the cross and to be an Easter people, a people who live in joy and hope and peace, we are then also called to share that with others, as I had said in the past. But how do you do that? How do you live in joy and peace and hope with others? Well, it's by showing mercy to them. Right? You heard the definition. I'll give it to you one more time. It's compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. And so in our life, in our lives, just as Christ has shown us, when someone has persecuted you, turn the other cheek. 
When someone's asking something of you, give them a little more. So when before he was even crucified for us, he was already showing us how to be merciful towards others, how to be compassionate towards others. But in his resurrection, what a greater witness that he continues to still live that out. Again, when he had every right to point the finger at all of his disciples and say, you who abandoned me, shame on you. I now go to someone else. And yet instead he says, peace be with all of you. And then he continues to encourage them to go out into the world to spread hope to those who most need it. And it's a beautiful thing, again, my brothers and sisters, that he's calling us to, to be a people of mercy. And this is what we see in that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, how the community of believers were living uh, as in community. Everything they owned, they shared with one another. When they ate meals, they sat together and enjoyed it, the meal in peace with each other. And that's the mercy that our Lord calls us to do to witness to, to be a people of hope in that way. Because as a people of faith, what is it that we are ultimately asking for? You know, what is that, what are we ultimately asking from our Lord as a people of faith? It's a beautiful question that we ought to reflect on. What is it that we are ultimately uh, asking our Lord for to, as we desire to follow Him? Is it for riches? For good health? What is it that we are asking for? Well, I'm not hearing a response from my congregation here. <laughs> so I'll give the answer. It was in the second reading. The salvation of our souls. Right? Rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And so my brothers and sisters, that's what our Lord is inviting us to when He calls, uh, when He's pouring out His divine mercy upon us. As I have forgiven you, as I have loved you, go do, on to, go do that to others. Be merciful towards others. Be compassionate towards others. Love one another. In that way we learn to imitate Christ and His divine love for us. In that way we spread out into the world mercy and compassion and hope so that we can end bitterness. We can end strife. We can end division so that all may be reunited in Christ Himself. And that is what we are all called to as people of faith. And that's how we will attain salvation for our souls. When we ourselves are willing to follow Christ. To live in His mercy. And this mercy is unlimited. He pours it out upon us. But if only we would receive it. If only we would receive it. Because love... Love is given to us is uh, I don't want to say an option. We we have a choice, right? To either receive it or to reject it. And what our Lord is telling us is that I'm I'm giving you a choice in the matter. Receive my love and my mercy, or you can turn away from it and do your own thing. But as a people of faith, I encourage and exhort to each and every one of you. Let us receive it. There is no sin, no sin, that He will not forgive as long as we turn our hearts back to Him and desire for conversion. And that's a great gift that He gives to us, to each and every one of us. There is no sin that is not greater than He Himself is because He is our Maker, He is our Father. There's nothing that He will not forgive if only we turn our hearts back to Him because He desires us to live in peace. So my brothers and sisters, believe that. 
have faith in Him who time and time again uh, shows us by His witness and by His love that He will never abandon us even when we have abandoned Him. He continues to bring us peace and He desires that for each and every one of us. May we, in turn, have the courage to receive it and then to share it with those around us, especially with those who most need it from us. We stand coming together as a people of faith as one family let us profess that faith that we have received I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages God from God Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he came in heaven. For our sake he was crucified under an object of He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing how much our Heavenly Father loves us and desires us to come to Him as His beloved children, we bring to Him now these petitions. For the church and our parish family, May we be a sign of Christ's mercy in the world by our witness and our words. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, that they will work in unity for the welfare of all people, especially in spreading hope and peace to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all health care workers, caregivers, and first responders, May they find rest and strength in Christ, so that they may continue to serve those who are in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by sin, that the grace of the resurrection move them to receive God's mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are homebound and shut in, that they will not succumb to the feeling of loneliness and despair, but be drawn closer to Christ's real presence in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from disease and respiratory illness, may they find healing, strength, and hope through Christ's divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to face the trials and difficulties of life with confidence and certainty that comes from Christ's victory over death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been called to the banquet of eternal life, especially Helen Stepnik, and those who grieve for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of presentation for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your great love for us, you gave us your only Son, 
to save us, to heal us, and to bring us life eternal. And so, Lord, we turn to you with these prayers and petitions, and we ask you to make them your own. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we pray the altar. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear of him who spoke as none ever spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hands and side, nor find. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lodge yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome of paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And, em and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Oh. 
merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those whom, to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and prove this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, is Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the Resurrection from the Dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who do this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest and sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who go sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Dear brothers and sisters, as I hold the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in front of you, I invite you, encourage you, to make an act of spiritual communion, to ask our Lord to enter into your own hearts and souls, wherever you may be. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at me spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
that he would never depart from us unless we decide not to receive him. And so let that be a words of encouragement for us, my brothers and sisters, to always go to our Lord, never uh, doubting the love that he has for us, and making sure that you know, our own pride and ego don't become an obstacle to receiving the mercy that he desires us to have. And so tomorrow, like last week, uh, after the 9.30 a.m. Mass, there will be a Eucharistic blessing available for you, uh, for all of those who desire to receive it, uh, in the upper parking lot. So just drive on through. I'll have ushers available to direct traffic. Uh, so we'll start at 11 o'clock so that there can be a little time to uh, transition from Mass to going outside. And we'll stop at 11.45 or until all the cars are done. So I invite you to come and participate if you're able to during that time. Uh, continue to pray for one another during this Easter season. Be a people of hope and joy and bring that and share that with others, especially those who most need it. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of, and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs up to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the whole land of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.